Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice polynomial equation. We have 8x plus 7 squared times 4x plus 3 times 2x plus 2 equals 9, and we're going to be solving for x values. I'll be presenting two methods, and let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I'm going to distribute and get a quartic. Nice? Not really. When you distribute and get a quartic from here, it's not going to look that nice. And I did it for you. Let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. So when you go ahead and distribute the whole thing and simplify, you get one of these expressions. Of course, if you put everything on the same side, you're going to get the bottom equation, which is 512x to the fourth power plus 1792x cubed plus so on and so forth. You get the idea. It is a quartic, but not only that, it has big gigantic coefficients, which makes it harder to solve, especially with the rational root theorem, because we're supposed to be looking at the factors of this divided by factors of this. There's a lot of possibilities, but not only that, the numbers are big and clumsy. So there must be an alternative method, right? Which is called the second method. And there's actually something super special about this equation. Do you want to know about it? Okay, let's proceed. So let me rewrite my equation. And notice that I spaced it out a little bit. Now, here's what is so special about this equation. It has 8x, 4x, and 2x. Do you see that? Don't worry about the constants for now. So here's what we can do. We can multiply this equation by 2 and then by 4, which is equivalent to multiplying by 8. So we can multiply the right-hand side by 8 and distribute and get the 8x three times. You see? That's very special, right? So let's see what happens. 8x plus 7 squared. And then when you distribute the 2x, you're going to get 8x plus 6. And then the last one is going to give you 8x plus 8. And this is going to equal 72. Not only that, there's actually another thing that's special about this equation because this equation is super special, which some people call a contrived problem because that's what math problems are, the ones that appear on math competition. I'm pretty sure this problem appeared on some math competition, which I don't know the name of. So here's how it proceeds. Notice that we got 8x plus 7, 8x plus 6, 8x plus, 8x plus 8. Do you see the relationship between those two things? Do you like it? I do. Because they are consecutive numbers. So if we name one of these something, how about A or maybe U? This kind of brings us back to the thumbnail, right? Can you solve it? Yes. You can actually solve a lot of problems and you can also solve this problem. In both senses, of course, right? So if this is u, so u is 8x plus 7, 8x plus 6 is just going to be 1 less than this. In other words, if you subtract 1 from both sides, you get 8x plus 6. So this will be u minus 1. And obviously, this is 1 more than u, which is u plus 1. Get the idea? So everything is very specially arranged. Now notice what happens next. This is mind-blowing u squared is multiplied by u minus 1 and u plus 1. And that gives us 72. At this point, you could probably just stop, pause, and check. Or I mean guess and check, right? That shouldn't be too hard. But guess what? We can make it even better. Because u minus 1 and u plus 1 are actually a nice pair that makes up what is called a difference of two squares. So these two make up u squared minus 1. And now you got yourself into another substitution. <laughs> okay, substitution within substitution. But that's going to be the last one, I promise. And we're going to go ahead and do this. How about you calling u squared something like t? You know, t is a good thing. t times t minus 1 equals 72. At this point, can you think about two numbers that are consecutive and their product is 72. Actually, there are two pairs because this is a quadratic equation. 
Do you see that? Okay, how does it work? You can go ahead and distribute. Simplify. And then either use the quadratic formula or factor. Factoring is cooler. So in other words, this comes up a lot, by the way, factoring trinomials. Maybe we should make a separate video on this whole thing with examples. I'm thinking about it. I'm hopefully going to be able to plan it anytime soon. And there's also a really cool method for solving quadratic equations uh, that have a non-leading uh, coefficient that's not one. And there's actually a really cool method that I've seen in a book, and I love it. Anyways, I'll share with you later on. But here for this problem, we are looking for two numbers whose product is negative 72, and those numbers also have to add up to negative 1, which is the coefficient of t. Does that make sense? Great. So what are those numbers? Well, you can pretty much go through all the possibilities like negative 1 and 72, negative 2 and 36, but if you already know the answer, it's okay. Just say it, okay? And in this case, the numbers would be negative 9 and 8 because their sum is negative 1. Make sense? And obviously their product is negative 72, right? So from here we get t minus 9 and t plus 8 as our factors. Now notice that if you go ahead and distribute this, you're going to get that. So it actually checks. You don't have to check your work every time, but sometimes it's a good idea. Great, so what do we get from here? We should be getting two solutions, right? By setting t minus 9 equal to 0, I'm getting t equals 9. Awesome. And by setting t plus 8 equal to 0, I'm getting t equals negative 8. Again, awesome, right? Well, let's find out because we still have to back substitute, right? I mean, substitution is cool, but if you do this very many times, then you kind of have to reverse the process or back substitute. In this case, t is, what? I forgot. u squared. Yay. Great. So we're going to replace t with u squared. So u squared equals 9 is going to give us two answers. As you know, u equals 3 and u equals negative 3. Awesome. But let's pause here and go to the other solution. t equals negative 8 means u, squ u squared equals negative 8. Uh-oh. This, this did not work well. It gave us non-real solutions or complex non-real solutions. But we can still write down the solutions if you square root both sides. You're going to get 2 root 2i and negative 2 root 2i. And obviously those u values are also valid because they are complex. Okay? Great. We still have to back substitute, right? What is u? u what are you? Who are you? Okay, let's go back and see what u is. u is, I think there was a movie, right, about that, like u is, you are, anyways. 8x plus 7 is equal to u, so u is equal to 8x plus 7, that's what we named it, right? Now we can go ahead and plug in these values and get the x values from there. We're going to look at something else after this real quick, but if you set 8x plus 7 equal to 3, from here you get x equals negative 1 half, if you set it equal to negative 3, you get x equals negative 5 fourths. If you do the complex, you get the complex, so on and so forth. Easy to do. Those are uh, left as an exercise. Let's go ahead and take a look at some solutions. Yay, those are real solutions. And these are the complex solutions. Ta-da! And of course, at the end, we're going to finish up with a graph. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.